Hi, my name is Fred Taylor. I'm with McLeod Racing Industries. I'm here today to show you some of the product that we have. Um, starting right here, we're showing you our hydraulic throw-up bearings. Now we make two different styles. We make a bolt-on style and we make a slip-on style. The slip-on style is what we prefer to use if, can, if we can, and that means we have to have enough clearance. This slides right over the collar. There's two little O-rings right here, and they're not seals, they're just to make it an interference fit. So you slide this onto the collar, and then you can thread the bearing. It, this aluminum piece is threaded. You can thread the bearing in and out to get your clearance adjusted. That's what's the beauty of this. So when you, when you put this in on the uh, transmission, you want to adjust this so that the face of the bearing is within 150 to 200 thousandths from the tip of the fingers. So if it's not, you can thread it in to get closer or out to get further away. And that's the beauty. Now, let's say you can't get the clearance. You put it in and you've, you don't have any clearance at all. The bearing's up against the fingers. Well, then we go to our bolt-on bearing. This bolt-on bearing does the same thing as a slip-on bearing, except instead of sliding over the collar, it replaces the collar. So it is transmission specific. Uh, it's just like changing the collar on a Muncie to a T10. You can't take a collar off of a, a Muncie and put it on a T10. No more can you put a uh, hydraulic bearing from a Muncie to a T10. So it is transmission specific because the back of this is machined identical to the collar. So what you do, and this will give you uh, more clearance. Uh, this is what you would use on Chevrolets uh, because they use a four-speed uh, bell housing. It's not deep enough. And then also on the early Ford four-speeds, your top loaders and your, uh, your T10 transmissions that were used in the Fords. Uh, if you've got more than three inches of clearance between the back face of the bell housing, right here, the back face of the bell housing, down to the fingers, if you've got three inches or more, you can use a slip-on bearing. If you don't, you have to use a bolt-on bearing. Uh, the way you change the clearance, if the clearance is not right, we have to change the, uh, uh, the piston to a different length piston. We have eight different length pistons. Each piston is 200 thousandths longer or shorter than the other pistons. Um, that's a lot of work to put this on, trial fit it, send it back, change the piston. So if you'll just make the measurement from the back face of the bell housing to the tip of the fingers before you order it and then call in, we can actually tell you how to order the bearing with the right length piston. So it's plug and play when you get it. You don't have to do any of this measuring and stuff. So this is one of our um, best selling products is our hydraulic bearings. We sell lots and lots of these. Right here, what you're seeing is our master cylinder, and this particular master cylinder happens to be for the Camaros from 1984 to 2002. Um, so any of the Camaros, the late model Camaros that had hydraulic clutch linkages uh, can use this master cylinder. What we've done is we've partnered with Wheelwood, and we make our own brackets. They build us a special master cylinder that bolts onto here, and this replaces the OEM master cylinder. You say, well, why do I want to replace the OEM master cylinder? If you have a clutch that is not releasing, whether it be a dual disc clutch or somebody's aftermarket clutch, and it's not releasing for whatever reason, this master cylinder is 13 16 bore. Uh, an OEM master cylinder is 3 quarter inches of bore, which means the same travel, this is going to displace more fluid, and it's going to make the bearing move further, which is going to give you more release. So that's the beauty of running one of our master cylinders. The next thing we have here is one of our special bearings. Now this one here happens to be for a Chevrolet. Chevrolet at one time made three different length bearings. There was a, a long bearing, a medium bearing, and a short bearing. They've discontinued the medium bearing. They only make the short and long bearings. What we've done is we've engineered a bearing to be all three. So all you do is you pull this collar right here apart and you have two rings. So if I put this collar on without any rings at all, I've got the short bearing. If I pull this apart and install one ring, I have the medium bearing. And if I put both rings in here, I have the long bearing. So you buy one bearing and you've got all links. Now, why do you need different length bearings? You can change clearances with ball studs, but all that's going to do is change the fork angle. If you've got a short bearing, you have to run a long ball stud to get the fork angle to be right. And a proper fork angle is what you need to get good clutch release. Uh, 
To do that, if you've got a short bearing, the, the, um, the fork may interfere with the uh, pressure plate cover because you've got counterweight levers or, or counterweights or anything like that. It may interfere with the fork. You need to get the fork further back. Of course, with a ball stud, if you get it further back, you're changing the angle. So with a longer bearing, you actually get the fork back away from the clutch, and then you can trim it out with a ball stud to get your angle to be right. So that's the beauty of this. And like I say, also, invariably, uh, a customer will buy this on a Friday afternoon. He wants to go racing tomorrow. He's putting this in at night, and if he's got just a regular uh, bearing, uh, he's always, if he's like me, Murphy's Law, he always bought the wrong bearing. This one here, you buy one bearing, you got it fixed. You don't have to worry about it. Moving on to the next item is our Street Pro and Super Stroke Street Pro kits. Uh, a lot of customers have asked us, do you make a kit? Up until recently, everything we had was a la carte. You bought a pressure plate, then you bought a disc, and you bought a flywheel and a bearing and whatever. We've since uh, created these kits. Uh, it's our Street Pro, which will handle up to 300 to 350 horsepower. Uh, comes with a pressure plate, a disc, a pilot tool, a throwout bearing, and a pilot bearing. Um, the Street Pro is good for about three to 350 horsepower. We're gonna use organic lining on both sides of the disc. Then the next thing we have is our Super Street Pro. Identical in looks, same type of kit, but what we've changed is on the flywheel side of the disc, right here, on the flywheel side, we've gone to a bronze metallic lining to give it more holding power. So that is our Super Street Pro. Okay, and that's good for about 500 horsepower. Now, if the customer's got more than that, then we move into our next clutch. And this is really the flagship of our company right now. This is our RST and or RXT, and I'll explain. The RST is a dual disc clutch. Unlike any other clutch out there, it bolts to your single disc flywheel. You don't have to buy a new flywheel. That brings the cost down. Um, also, this clutch will fit more applications than a, a double disc that has its own flywheel. Um, this one here, the RST, it's good for 800 horsepower. Very, very, extremely light pedal pressure. Extremely smooth in taking off. It does have Marcel bottom disc. So when you install this, it will feel just like you put in an OEM diaphragm clutch. It won't feel anything like a performance clutch. After uh, a period of time to get it broke in, so you're making contact 100% um, on the, uh, the disc material, uh, this clutch here will hold 800 horsepower. And don't be afraid to use this on anything from 400 to 800 horsepower. Uh, because the pedal pressure is so light, uh, I've put this in cars that don't make as much horsepower, but maybe the driver is an older uh, gentleman, had knee surgery, does not want a, uh, a stiff pedal, uh, wants a clutch that will hold his car in um, easy to drive in rush hour traffic. And so he wants to drive a Toyota, but he wants to own a Corvette. So this is how we do it. Then what we have over here is our bell housings. Now what we're looking here is at a standard bell housing. This, this particular bell housing right here is our 8630. This fits all GMs. Uh, starter pocket is on the uh, passenger side. This would fit your Chevrolets, your big block Chevrolets and small block Chevrolets, uh, your LSs. Um, now what we've done here is uh, on our bell housings, we have a ring, a choke ring. And the reason we have this choke ring that goes in here is because this bell housing will fit a couple of different transmissions. With the choke ring installed, which brings the, the bore diameter smaller, it's gonna be a Chevrolet. So you got your Chevrolet bolt pattern here and you can put it on there. You take the choke ring out, now you can put a Ford top loader in. Ford top loaders were very popular back in the day uh, because of their strength in drag racing. A lot of guys were wanting to put a Ford top loader behind a Chevrolet. So all we did is just remove the ring and we have the top loader pattern right here. It's already in it. So this bell housing will take a Ford top loader or a GM transmission. It is SFI 6.1 certified. Um, it does come with a block plate and all the bolts and all the hardware you need to bolt it in. Our center bore is not punched at the time the bell housing is made. It's not punched at all. It's actually machined. After the bell housing is done and it's located off the dowels, it's actually bored. So our, our center hole, which is the most important uh, feature of a bell housing, because this is what 
positions the transmission, not the bolt holes. This is what positions the transmission behind the crankshaft. Our bell housings are within five thousandths of being center of the crankshaft. You can pull any of our bell housings at any time and spot check them and everyone is within five thousandths. If it's not, it doesn't get sold.